Hi everybody, welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about the um, the different ways that you can implement GUIs into your game um, and how to how to create a GUI. So first of all, um, what is a GUI? Well, if you go up to the uh, project tree, you'll see the GUIs label here. Just expand that and you'll see several GUIs that are built in uh, for you already. Status line, icon bar, inventory, pan panel, and restart yes or no. These are the, the GUIs that you've probably already seen in the game if you've, if you've gone through the default game already. Um, if you double click on each one, it'll bring it up. Basically what a GUI is, in, in the case of uh, AGS, is it's, it's really any, way, any window that pops up on the screen uh, that the player can see that the player can usually interact with or it gives the information to the player. Um, so in the form of text, for example, or, or things like that. Or if you want to get information from the, from the, uh, the player as far as you want them to type in something and, and you want information or um, or if you just want to ask the ask the user a question and want to have an okay or a cancel button those all done be those would all be done with uh, with GUIs um, the first one here is the status line and this is actually the the bar that appears across the top of the screen the gray bar that appears um, usually this is for giving the player text information so if you wanted to put something up here um, you know, a score or the name of your game or something like that. You could you could do that up here, and this is by default. This always shows on the the screen. Um, the icon bar we've all we all we've all seen this one already. It's uh, it's all the icons that that you can use throughout the game. This is the default inventory um, uh, GUI, which basically displays all the inventory items uh, in this box here and gives you the three buttons across the bottom. Um, OK, the pointer button to select an inventory item, and the uh, look um, icon or, or button, and then the up and down arrows that you can use if you have a scrolling window here. Uh, this is the panel that you uh, use when you click on the game settings. Save game, load game, restart, all the basic um, uh, all the basic actions you can do um, with your game is, is here in the form of buttons, and then you have sliders for volumes, um, the amount of gamma and the speed that your game runs at. So all of these, again, these are all GUIs. These are all customizable, which we'll talk about later. Um, you can totally change how this, this GUI looks if you want. If you want to stop using the GUI altogether, you can do that, or you can put your own graphics and put your own text and what have you in there uh, if you'd like to. And then finally, we have a, a restart yes or no. Um, this is the one that comes up when you say you want to restart the game. It says, are you sure you want to restart yes or no? Um, these are all the, the ones that are built in. What we're going to do in this in this video is we're going to start by creating a, GU, a new GUI. We're going to ask the player for some information. We'll ask the player for their name, um, and then we'll store that that we'll store that value in the game so that we can call the player by their name. Uh, lots of games do this. Um, adventure games might do this at the beginning of the game. For example, you ask the player for the name. You store that away, and then um, later on, when when another player is talking to the main character, you can call that that character by their name. For example. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's um, let's right click on GUIs and we'll say new GUI. I won't get into new text window GUI at this point in time. I might get into that later. Um, that's just a way that you can overload. You, you can basically customize how the, the default text displays on the screen. So when you do a display from the script and it displays the text on the screen, you can change the way that GUI looks. Um, but we'll, for now, we'll just do a, a new GUI. And this brings us a big, huge GUI um, window. And, uh, oh, by the way, some people say GUI, some people say GUI, I've always said GUI, so um, graphical user interface is what that, the, what the letters stand for. So let's do, the first thing we want to do with this is let's resize it. I don't like the way uh, it's so big, so let's change the size of it. By default, it's 300 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. Let's change that to be about um, 100 pixels wide by, let's say, 50 pixels tall. And so immediately now we've, we see that that's, um, that's resized the GUI. In fact, I'll make that a little bit bigger. I'll make it 150 wide. I want it to be a little bit uh, wider. And let's actually make it 75 tall. That gives us about the right, the right size that we're, we're wanting to go for here. This is going to be a very simple GUI. I'm not going to put any graphics in it right now. Um, just very basic, basic stuff. What you'll notice is, just like when we were ed editing the room, we had some, some custom controls up here for drawing things like walkable areas and uh, walk behind areas and that kind of thing that appeared at the top on the toolbar. When you're editing a GUI, you have um, these buttons here. These are the GUI buttons. Um, they represent the different controls. 
Uh, they're called controls that you can put on your GUI. So you can add a button, you can add uh, a label, a text box, a list box, a slider, and an inventory window. Um, we'll go over each of these uh, at some point. For now, what we we want three of these. We want to display a label on the screen that says that tells the player to enter. Please enter your name. Then we want to have a text box under that that allows them allows the player to enter their name. And then we want two buttons across the bottom. Or actually, we'll we'll just have one button across the bottom that says OK. I was going to say we'll have a cancel button, but but let's not worry about that for now. So the first thing we want to do then is put a label. You click on label, add a label. Then you just drag out the size that you want the label to be. I'll make it about that big. Now by default the text that's in the label is called new label. Let's change that. I'll go over to the properties of the, the, the label. Change the text to please type your name. And let me make that a little bit bigger. I'd like it all to appear on one line like that. So uh, actually make that a little smaller. There we go. Please type your name. Now let's have a um, a text box, which is just a, a box that the player can type in. Again, click on Add Text Box, drag the size of the text box that you want. Uh, by default, it'll say Text Box Contents. This is something that only shows up in the editor. You won't actually see the words Text Box Contents in the game, um, but that's just showing you where the text box contents would be. You have a couple of options uh, in the properties window, like show border, whether you want this black border to appear around the, the text box. Usually you'd, you'd want that, um, just to give the player an indication of where the text box is. The name of the text box, I'll change this to TV name, TV standing for text box, and I'll just say name because that's what it's going to contain. And then the, the, um, the dimensions of the text box down here, we'll just leave those as they are. And finally, finally we want a button. I'll click the button drag out the size of the button that we want and by default it says new button well that's not what we want we want to change the text again to OK Oops. Okay. Um, the text alignment is in the top middle no we actually want that in the center of the button so let's change that to centered that, that centers the text within the button you have lots of different options as you can see here, top middle, top left, top right, middle left, centered, middle right. I think these are self-explanatory what they do. For example, bottom middle, we'll put it in the bottom of the, of the button in the middle. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. We want our text to be centered. We can choose a, te a text color using the colors palette that we talked about in, in an earlier video. And then we choose what do we want to happen when the user clicks on uh, the button. I'll go over that in just a second, but for now I want to change the name of the button. I'll call it B OK. B standing for button. OK. And then we want to um, when the click when the user clicks on the button, this is to, this tells AGS what we want to happen when the user clicks on the button. If you click uh, the drop down, you see three three different things here. You have no action, set cursor mode, or run script. Um, the run script um, act, option will basically run run some script that, that I'll define in just a second. The set cursor mode, this is for um, for example when on the icon bar across the top of the of the screen by default you have the the look, the walk, the speak icons across the top. Well when you click on those what they do is they actually set the cursor mode. They set they change the cursor mode to, to look if you clicked on the eyeball or um, or the hand icon they change the uh, if you clicked on the hand or, or walk if you change if you clicked on walk so that's what this would be used for you'd say set the cursor mode um, and then if you click on that you have this new mode number here that tells you what cursor mode do you want to change uh, into when the user clicks on that we haven't talked about cursors yet uh, in detail but um, when we do this will make sense uh, which I'll get uh, hopefully I'll get to that in the later video about cursor modes for now let's just click on run script because that's what, that's what we want to happen now what script does it run? Well you go over to our trusty lightning bolt that we've seen already. We have the on click event. Let's go ahead and click the button that says um, it creates a function for us in our global script for on click. I'll get into uh, what, what we want to happen here in the next video um, where we're going to actually set the, the player's name and then we'll be able to call, um, call the player by that name um, a little later on. So tune in for the next video where I'll continue this, uh, this part of the tutorial. Thanks for watching guys.